morning, everyone. Welcome to West Guilford Baptist Church, your country church in the heart of Halliburton. I'm Pastor Sean, lead pastor here. I think everybody knows us pretty much. This is Amy. I'm Amy. Our Minister of Pastoral Care. Welcome online for those who are, are visiting and also to the gardens. I haven't mentioned the gardens in a while, so thank you very much to those who are joining us at the gardens, mm -hmm. our, our pod parishioners, whatever you want to call there. Uh, just a few announcements. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Um, and we have uh, a few things to celebrate, including Mother's Day. On your way out the door, though, the girls will be handing out flowers to all the mothers, stepmothers, grandmothers. If you feel like a mother, uh, <laughs> you can have a, a rose on your way out the door. Emmy and Jubilee will be handing those out. Um, should we move on to? Yes. All right. So uh, we do have a few birthdays to, to celebrate. Marion Grant, Dale McConnell, and Owen Archer. All had birthdays this Officially week. Officially a teenager now, Officially this one is. Officially a teenager, <laughs> Owen is. And then uh, Gary and Kathy Burke had an anniversary on May 8th as well. Congratulations. And you might be wondering, Sean, why are you holding flowers when you're giving flowers out at the end of the, at the, end of the service? There's a big one that happened this week, or is going to happen this week. On May 17th, their 65th wedding anniversary. Dick 65th and Jean. wedding Sorry, anniversary. Sorry, you were supposed to do this. No, Dick no, no, and Jean, no, no. come on up and have some, get some flowers. Come here. Should we go down? We'll sit down. <laughs> do you mind getting a picture for us? You don't Heather? have to do stairs anymore. <laughs> Welcome oh, to you. Okay. Heather, can you get a picture for us? That'd be great. Here you Thank go. You. You're so welcome. We're going to get a picture. These, we, we present these to you in, in gratitude for the example that you have set of a godly relationship of godly individuals in, in this church family for, such, for long before we came. <laughs> and you are loved no, no, and no, no. cherished. <laughs> and yes, so happy anniversary. And then we're going to look this way head for Heather okay. to get a picture. Which way? Oh, bless your heart. I uh, bless. Excellent. Well, I thought maybe it asked <laughs> how we managed it. Yeah. Would you like to say something? Want to say something? Want to say hi? No. You won't take the microphone. <laughs> we love you guys. Happy oh, anniversary. Oh, and right. a card too. So we have three forms of communication that we now do. God bless Holly. She's doing a great job. So you may have received. You may have received a congregational email this week. Uh, we have the monthly bulletin, we have a pre-roll that's running before the service, which means we're going to try from here on out to kind of cut down the amount, now, amount of announcements. I realized last week when Brian was hosting and I handed him a, like a, a list, <laughs> there were nine announcements, I thought, maybe we're going a little over the top here. So we're going to try to cut them down. If you did not get the email, though, this is your opportunity. There's a sheet on the, on the, uh, the table just outside the door there to please write down. We probably have your email, but it, it'd be much easier for Holly if you put your name and your email on there and if you didn't receive that email uh, to make sure we're getting all the information possible. Um, Kingdom Prayer is still going to be happening after the uh, pr Kingdom Prayer tomorrow at 1030. That continues on. There's prayer available at the back of the ser after the service. Um, the final luncheon is May 28th. Please talk to Carla about items to bring. It's casseroles and salads and desserts. I love casseroles, so I'm very happy about that, yes. And our deacons meeting is Friday, May 26th at 2 p.m. Um, and then if you want to mention that. So please note, uh, Friday, May 26th is at 2. We moved it back an hour. And then you are going to do the meeting today. There is a Women's Day at Joy Bible Camp happening I love Joy Bible Camp. I want everyone else to also love Joy Bible Camp, so I hope that you will come. It's going to be Thursday, June 8th from 10 until 4. The speaker is Tess Scott. There's, it's always a fantastic time, and all of the money that they raise goes into the ministry that Joy does. It is good gospel ministry. So I just encourage you all to, to come on out and support, support Joy. And that's it. All right, and while the worship team comes up, Am I going to do a Mother's Day prayer? At, at the prayer time. At the prayer time? Okay. Yeah. I'm <laughs> eager for it. But I can wait. I can wait. While the worship team comes up, let's just take a moment to recognize while we're, why we're here. We're going to close our eyes. We're going to welcome the Holy Spirit into the room. Welcome the Holy Spirit into our hearts. There's been cares that have happened this week. 
There's been celebrations this week. There's been some trauma sometimes There's some at, at, at points this week. We recognize, Lord God, we're not here to perform for the person next to us. We're not here to sing like we're the next Grammy winner. We are here to worship the living God. We're here for you, Lord God. We know you go with us through the week. But we just want to take this moment this morning on a Mother's Day to recognize you, recognize who you are, to invite you, Lord God, to have your way with us, with our hearts. Draw us into worship, we pray, in this moment. Just welcome personally, each and every person in this room, welcome personally the Lord into your heart to draw you to worship. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Come, Lord Jesus. Let's stand together. We'll sing holy, holy, holy.
Father, you are good. You are good and you come and you visit us, Lord God, uh, even, even though we, we fall away sometimes during the week, Lord God. Although we are your weak creatures, you are a great God who comes and visits us, Lord God. You are in the room, you are, in the habit, you, are, you are inhabiting, Lord God, the praises of your people this morning. And I praise you, I give you thanks, Lord God, for the ministry of your spirit to every heart in this room. We thank the Lord God for the ministry of the Spirit through, through these faithful followers of Jesus to my heart, and wor- those of us who are leading worship, Lord God, to be caught up in making it all about you. We pray for deeper intimacy, Lord God. We desire deeper intimacy with you. We pray, Lord God, that you'd forgive our sins and offenses, and more than blotting them out, Lord God, you would lead us through the power of your cross and resurrection to live even closer to you, Lord God even closer to your will in our lives, Lord God. Not just following rules, but living the way of the Holy Spirit in and through us, Lord God. Just pray, Lord God, that each each heart here right now would be touched by the Holy Spirit and we would grow just a little more closer to you in this moment, Lord God. We pray for those who are in need in our congregation. We've had so many requests, those that uh, have, have been asked Quietly, we pray for those who will not be named, Lord God, for whatever reason they've chosen uh, just to remain quiet. But we pray for them, Lord God, and for their trials that you would, you would heal, you would speak to, and you would witness yourself through the needs of your people, Lord God. And for those who have allowed their names to be named, we pray for Lillian, Lord God. We uphold Sylvia. We uphold, jo- uphold Joanne. And Lori. For D, Lord God, thank you, Lord God, for the wonderful witness of your goodness through D. You're glorifying yourself there, Lord God, and her healing. We pray that you continue that. We pray for Sharon. We continue to pray for Sharon, Lord God. We pray for Steph. We pray for Ruth. And I just invite now, either silently or aloud, any other cares, concerns for, for people in your life or in our church who you know are in need at this time. We pray for Ruby, Lord God. You call us, Lord God, to be a people of peace and a people of compassion. Pour out your compassion in our hearts to, to know when and how to pray for those who are in need, but also how to, how to answer, Lord God, prayers on your behalf uh, by just reaching out, Lord God. Move through our spirits, we pray, Lord. I give you thanks, Lord God, for this lovely day that we've awoken to, for this season of new birth in Halliburton we get to witness every single year. I think of the flowers that are blooming, Lord God, 
One moment a tree is, is barren, one moment it's green, one moment a tree is covered in white flowers. What a wonderful creation you've created for us to enjoy, Lord God. We give you thanks for that. We just uh, we give all the glory to you and help us, Lord God, as our spirits are uplifted, to be uplifted to, to minister through your spirit. And as we are, are brought to a feeling, Lord God, of new life, we recognize that the true new life comes through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We pray for all the needs of our congregation, the upcoming work be, Lord God. That's going to be happening at the beginning of June here at our church as we, we beautify our church and get prepared for the summer season, Lord God. We pray for protection there. Uh, we pray, Lord God, that you would bring out willing workers and uh, that you would draw us closer together, Lord God, through that experience. We continue to pray for our young men's group as we, we start to bring that to a close for the season, Lord God. We pray for the young men that you've given us in this church uh, to minister to and to have ministry to us. Many of them are at the back of the church right now ministering, Lord God. We also pray for uh, the young men from other churches who are joining us, God. We pray that they would be upheld, they would, be, they would grow, Lord God, in grace and in wisdom to become men of faith and leadership in your church. That's what we're looking to do. And they would learn, Lord God, to dig deeply into your Bible. We just uphold them to you. We pray for the women of the word. We pray for the Barnabas men's groups as they start to come to a close for the year, Lord God. Uh, and start their leadership looks forward to next year, Lord God. We just give you thanks for that ministry. Uh, and we just uh, we pray, Lord God, that the lessons that have been learned would be carried through and would grow a harvest of righteousness this summer, Lord God, through those who have taken part. And we pray for our, our mission partners. Uh, we pray for Youth Unlimited, Lord God. Thank you for all the folks who showed up to pray at the train yesterday. Uh, wonderful prayer warriors who just bathe the schools in prayer. They need it, Lord God, so badly. We pray for Camp Mediba. Uh, we pray, Lord God, for their ministry. You would prosper their ministry as they prepare for the summer. We pray for safety and protection around the ministry and the leaders there and all the precious children that you're bringing, Lord God. We pray for the Pregnancy and Family Care Center, Lord God, that their bottle drive. We have the bottles at the door here, Lord God. We pray that you would fill those bottles uh, for this ministry that is solely, solely funded through the Christians in this area and beyond, Lord God. We pray for, to prosper their ministry. We pray, Lord God, uh, beyond the Christian community, we pray for a prosperous summer for our local businesses. We pray for our local leaders, our provincial and our national, inter international leaders, Lord God. We may not agree with them, but you, pray, you command us to pray for them. So we uphold them by prayer. We pray that you would bring to faith our mayor and the leaders of our nation, Lord God. We pray for all the mayors who are, are represented in this room. We pray for our premier, we pray for our prime minister, Lord God, that they would all come to faith in you today, Lord God. And they would learn to rule with justice and true equity, the equity that's found in you. We pray for the recovery efforts for the wildfires in Alberta, Lord God. Uh, we pray for the Sudan. A couple of these are falling off the, the news cycle, the 24-hour news cycle, but hasn't fallen off the top of our minds, Lord God. For all those who are working for the recoveries, recovery in Alberta, we pray for the cessation of the wildfires there, Lord God. We pray for the Sudan, just it's flaring up, and we pray, Lord God, for a miracle to happen there. And we just continue to pray for peace in the Ukraine as they talk about fresh offensives that, seem, that always happen in the spring, Lord God. Uh, how about fresh peace? How about we give that a try? We pray for that, Lord God, a miracle. We also pray, Lord God, finally for the family and the friends of Sergeant Eric Mueller, who was lost from the OPP. Uh, these frontline workers, Lord God, uh, step into the line of duty. Uh, and there's nothing, no more love that can be shown than to give up one's life for one's friends, for one's family, and for one's community, Lord God. So we pray for, for the for his friends, but especially for his family, Lord God, that you would be with them at this time. As we turn from that, Amy is going to offer up some prayers for the moms. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the blessing of motherhood. We thank you for what it is and for what it does in our communities. Lord, how many of us first heard your name from our mothers. And so, Lord, we pray for them. We pray for all of the mothers who are represented here and in our community in this world, Lord. We pray, God, for the mothers who grieve today, the mothers who grieve children who are in heaven 
and mothers who are grieving children who have just turned away from you. We pray for them, Lord. We pray that you'd strengthen them, give them renewed hope. Fill them with your Holy Spirit, Lord. God, we thank you for the mothers who care for children who are not their own. Stepmothers, foster mothers, all mothers who care for kids who aren't theirs. Even teachers, Lord, so often do that. God, we pray that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit. And Lord, our first responsibility as mothers is to disciple our children. And we pray, God, that you would renew that vision in our minds for our kids. We pray for those children who will be in Kids Church today and who you have planned to come to this church in the future. We pray for them, Lord, and for the the good and faithful teachers that you've brought forward. We pray, God, that today would be a day of blessing for mothers. And it's in the name of Jesus that we ask these things. Amen. Our reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 21, starting at the 17th verse. That's the book of Acts. Chapter 21, starting at the 17th verse. If you don't have a Bible with you, there should be one in front of you. If you don't have one at home, there are our paper blue Bibles, the ESVs. You're welcome to take one of those home, and people have been, which has been great. We're going to have to get some more. That is a gift from West Guilford Baptist Church to you. So, Paul visits James, Acts 21, starting at the 17th verse. And when we had come to Jerusalem, the brothers received us gladly. On the following day, Paul went in with us to James and all the elders who were present. After greeting them, he relayed, related one by one the things that God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified God. And they said to him, You see, brother, how many thousands are here among the Jews of those who have believed. They are all zealous for the law. And they have been told about you, that you teach all the Jews who are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children or walk according to, their, to our customs. What then is to be done? They will certainly hear that you have come. Do therefore what we tell you. We have four men who are under a vow. Take these men and purify yourself, yourself along with them and pay their expenses so that they may shave their heads. Thus all will know that there is nothing in what they have been told about you, but that you yourself also live in observance of the law. But as for the Gentiles who have believed, we have sent a letter with our judgment that they should abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols and from the blood and from what has been strangled and from sexual immorality. Then Paul took the men the next day and he purified himself and along with them and went into the temple, giving notice when the days of purification would be fulfilled and the offering presented for each one of them. When the seven days were almost completed, the Jews from Asia, seeing him in the temple, stirred the whole crowd and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man who is teaching everyone everywhere against the, peop the people and the law in this place. Moreover, moreover, he even brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled this holy place. For they had previously seen Trophimus the Ephesian with him in the city, and they supposed that Paul had brought him to the temple. Then all the city was stirred up, and the people ran together. They seized Paul and dragged him out of the temple, and once the gates were shut, and they were seeking to kill him. Word came to the tribune of the cohort that all Jerusalem was in confusion. He at once took soldiers and centurions and ran down to them. And when they, when, he saw, when they saw the tribune and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. Then the tribune came up and arrested him and ordered him to be bound with two chains. He inquired who he was and what he had done. Some in the crowd were shouting one thing, some another, and as he could not learn the facts because of the uproar, he ordered him to be brought to the barracks. And when he, had, when he had came to the steps, he was actually carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the crowd. For the mob of the people followed, crying out, away with him. May God bless us by the reading of his word. Let's stand for one more song.
Jubilee and Emmy can lead the way there. Let's pray while the worship team makes their way down. Loving Father, we pray for your, your truth to be spoken, Lord God. I pray that I wouldn't be entertaining. I'm not praying that I'd be pithy. I'm not praying that I'd even be funny, Lord God. I pray that your truth would be spoken. And I pray, Lord God, that people through your truth and through your word would be brought closer to you. That's not just a lecture, Lord God, but it's an opportunity for us to learn through your word and be brought closer to you and into the likeness of your son. And so have your way, O oh Lord, we pray. Amen. I'm just going to move this pencil back here. So we are in Acts 21, starting at the 17th verse. Uh, Christina Tai was a Chinese Christian, and she was born the 18th of 25 kids. Anybody here? That probably beats anybody. Anybody have more than 25 kids in their family? I know I didn't. I was 18th of 25. She was described as a very serious child. I might be too if I was the 18th of 25 children. Uh, and she had originally planned or thought, she was so, such a serious child, she had originally thought that maybe she'd become a Buddhist nun. But she also had a very, she was keenly interested in the English language, so she ended up hearing the gospel at a missionary school. And through that, she came to faith, and uh, she eventually became a Christian. And when she returned home, she has a very big family, obviously, she led 55 members of her family to Jesus after she went back. Now, later on in her life, she contracted malaria, and uh, I know a few people that have contracted malaria. Anybody else know some folks? It's, it's a very, I, 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 we had guys, one guy, uh, one night, one night uh, apparently got bit by a mosquito, didn't even know it. We got back from, from Haiti, and he was walking on his way. He said, I was walking from my, my armchair, Padre, to the kitchen. And then he said, he's literally, and then he woke up in the hospital. A week later, he had cerebral malaria. Like, it can be very, very deliberate, deliberating. That was the end of his career. 
Um, thank goodness the, the government's been taking care of him. Well, she had something similar, and you'd think you'd despair. I'm doing all these things for you, God. 55 members of my family to lead them to faith, but here I am. I get malaria. I'm, I'm, I'm now confined to my bed. But then she had, can I, you turn me down in the monitors just a little bit? Uh, she had an even bigger ministry. She ended up having people, she did pastoral care. People came to visit her, in her when she was in her bed, but they weren't coming to minister to her. She ended up having a ministry from her bed where people come to her with their problems and she'd listen to them and then she'd give them advice. And what are you going to say to someone who's in a bed who's you know, full of the Holy Spirit who's ministering to you when you come to them with your problems? Had a wonderful ministry as a result, um, comforting people. And in her autobiography, she shared about these challenges but also the persecution that she had as a result of her conversion. And she quoted an ancient scholar in her book and the ancient Chinese scholar said this, a sage seeks opportunities and difficulties, and a fool finds difficulties and opportunities. A sage seeks opportunities and difficulties, and a fool finds difficulties and opportunities. And she said, this isn't just true as an ancient Chinese proverb. It is especially true in the life of the Christian. And her own life was an example of that. This morning, I want to build on the last two weeks and talk about an attitude, because the Bible gives us a choice to make this morning. The Bible gives us, I believe, a choice to make this morning. This week, this is our big idea. Take us to our next slide. The big idea this week is staying faithful to God produces a harvest of righteousness. So we talked about awareness of the Holy Spirit. Remember a couple of weeks ago, did a sermon on the Holy Spirit, talked about awareness. Then last week, we talked about that awareness of the Holy Spirit leads to watchfulness over our own hearts. The Holy Spirit's in there. So I'm going to watch over my heart along with the Holy Spirit. And that allows us to stay faithful to God and produces a harvest of righteousness as well as intimacy with our Lord and Savior. So Paul's, what we're going to see is that Paul's faithfulness to peace between the Gentiles and the Jews didn't quite go as he had planned, did it? He almost made it. It didn't quite go as he planned, but it did work out ultimately for God's glory. His plans didn't work out, but God's plan certainly did because he was faithful through what it was he was doing. He was imprisoned by the Romans, and from an, an earthly perspective, to be imprisoned in a place like that by the Romans from an earthly perspective is, I mean, I'd rather be confined to a bed than be in a place like that, right? That's terrible. But we follow, how we will follow over the next few weeks how God uses Paul's captivity for his glory. Amazing ways that God used that. So where are we in the book of Acts? We came back to the, uh, we've come back to Jerusalem here uh, from Paul's third missionary journey. We've made it through all three of Paul's missionary journeys. Uh, at the end, uh, Paul and his friends left Miletus from last week, and they kind of, you can see Miletus was here south, south of uh, Ephesus. They kind of came down, and then they kind of hopscotched their way back into Caesarea and then down up to Jerusalem, they say it, because the elevation is higher. And all along the way, Paul is visiting the Christians in these towns. And in every town he goes to, the Christians are basically saying, you're nuts. Do not go to Jerusalem. He actually has people prophesying, tying his hands up, saying, like, this is what's going to happen to you if you go to Jerusalem. Do not go there. The believers are trying to convince him not to. Everybody could see that it was a bad idea from a human perspective that Paul was headed to Jerusalem. And they just like, you just got to know, I, I've got a bad feeling about this, Paul. And we, but we really get a sense as we, if we read through the beginning part of, of Acts 21, how Paul is following the steps of Jesus. Um, we've been walking with Paul. I don't know about you, but I really get a sense at this moment of what, Je what it was like for Jesus in Galilee to set his face towards Jerusalem. Remember that? He's on his way to the cross, and the Bible says he set his face on toward Jerusalem. And the Samaritans, when they knew he was going to Jerusalem, shut him out. And he had to hopscotch his way down the other side of the, of the map in order to get down there. Now, we're not, I'm not saying any, where Jesus knew the cross was waiting for him. And even the disciples are like, oh, let's go die with him, right? That's what's going to happen. Now, I'm not in any way saying that Paul is equal with Jesus. But what I'm saying is that he's rather an example of someone who's trusting Jesus, who first walked the road of suffering and hardship. And there's nothing more forming for a follower of Jesus than to follow his footsteps and to follow his example, than to walk the path he walked. And that's how he conforms us into his likeness, friends. So I really want to key in. That's why I really want to, I was reading through Acts 21, why I really wanted to key in on 17 
and his arrival in Jerusalem, because I think that's kind of the big moment in this whole section. And so we find out um, an important point, uh, sorry, and we find out that uh, when he arrives, he's received gladly by the church. You can see that in verse 17. When he had come, we had come to Jerusalem, obviously Luke, the author, is with him. He's got his merry band of friends he's picked up from around, uh, all around the empire. And the brothers received us gladly. Uh, we find out that they, they've already received word of what Paul is up to, right? And it probably, if you think about it, Jerusalem, we, we know this already, uh, Jewish people from all over the empire, especially the Jewish elites, like to come back to Jerusalem, they do their pilgrimage, they pray at the temple, then they go back to their homes. So while they do that, a lot of word is filtering back as to what's going on in these synagogues, especially what Paul has been up to. But the great news about what Paul's been up to is mixed with a bunch of complaints about what Paul is up to. Quibbles and complaints over, let's be honest, religion and religious stuff, right? They're still trying to figure these things out. Now, this is an important point. Because when I first came to the passage, I have to be honest to you, I was disappointed by James and the leaders because we've been slowly walking with all these amazing things that Paul's been up to. And then he comes back and hears Paul saying the unbelievable things that God is up to in Asia, Macedonia, in Greece. He's probably relating the fact the gospel has gone to Egypt. It's gone to, all the way to Rome. We see that in verse 19. And it almost seems like the leaders in Jerusalem say to him, you know, that's great and all, but in verse 20 to 25, we've got this problem that we need to deal with. Right? That's almost what it seemed like when I read it. And I really thought that in this sermon, I'd be dealing with religion versus faith again. Right? What is religion? What is faith? Um, but I was incorrect. And as I dug in a little more, and especially in that first verse, in verse 17, the, the, the verse says they receive Paul gladly. The, the Greek term there is actually like with really honest joy. You know when you're really happy... Uh, I think about the first time I came back from, from university and my mom was there and mom was happy to see me, right? It was Mother's Day. Like the, that joy you have when your kids come from the summer after you've been away from them all winter. That's the kind of joy that the Greek is talking. It's real gladness. They're actually really happy to see Paul uh, in this moment. There's no hesitancy for them with Paul. So think about, you know, a meeting with your boss, Right, I had a number of these meetings with my boss, you know, where you think you're going to go in for a nice chat, it's going to be nice, but they're not really looking you in the eye, and they're kind of like, oh, how's it going, why don't you have a seat, right, and you know, and you just, immediately you sit down, you're thinking, okay, you're thinking back to your last two weeks, and you're like, what did I do wrong, like, what's going to happen here? There's just that hesitancy with respect to your boss, and you know something's up. There's none of that hesitancy here with Paul. Yes, there's issues going on. But when it comes to Paul and his ministry, there's actually gladness. There's a recognition of what God is up to. It's a glad, joyful greeting relayed firsthand again by Luke, who's the author and witnesses this. Not only that, but we see in verse 20, when they hear all that Paul's tell them, what do they do? What does it say that they do in verse 20? Someone tell me. They glorify God, right? So not only are they glad, the first thing they do is they receive him with gladness about what he has. Then when he relays her story, they're glorifying God. This is worship. Like it just leads to thank you, Lord. And there's worship that goes on. And so we want to recognize, they recognize that the Holy Spirit is moving. They recognize that Paul's ministry is ordained by God. Then with it, so it's within this context of being received gladly and already having worship God. Then they say, okay, listen. The word they share with him about the religious concern is really a heads up right? They're like, okay, brother, we get it. You've got a great ministry. We praise God for it. You got to know it's all, all's not well here. We're, we're dealing with some of these issues. I get a heads up sometimes from you. I'm laughing with, with, with Brian. Brian will give me a heads up sometimes with stuff that's happening in the community because he's 30 years, he's more plugged in than I am, right? So they're giving him a heads up as far as what's, what's going on. And uh, what's, the issue that's going on is these are Jewish people who were Jewish by birth, but then they had converted to Christianity and they're still carrying on their traditions as an act of devotion to God. Not as though it's required of God, but they like, this is how they've worshipped their whole lives. It's from the Old Testament, and this is the way they want to worship God as they go forward. The Gentiles don't have to do that, but we as Jewish people do decide that. But one of the problems when that happened, and we see this over and over again in the New Testament, is the lines get blurred. This happens with religion all the time, doesn't it? It happens with various forms of communion with certain ways we sing hymns, uh, with whether or not we wear a suit to worship, right? 
like this, the, the, the lines get blurred that say, well, not only is this an act of devotion, this is the way to do it, right? And everybody has to do that. So they had the same problem that we struggle with in our church, where they're struggling with these things. Instead of just an act of devotion, they say everybody has to do this. So those lines are starting to get blurred. There were some who believed that everyone had to follow Jewish laws to be Christians, and they were very loud about it. And this would be an ongoing problem for the church. And so Paul, after being way out there, is stepping right back into this. And we saw a lot of this in the first half of Acts, people caught up in these particular questions of the law. Um, we have to recognize that these, these questions of the law were fulfilled in Jesus' perfect life and death on the cross. The, the requirement to do so. You can do it as an act of devotion, but the requirement to do these things, most of them, was caught up in Jesus' perfect life and his death on the cross. And so they kind of missed that a little bit. And so, um, so the plan, so Paul's like, okay, I got you. And they said, but not only are, do we have a problem, brother, don't just, like, we always had a commander. Commanders always say, don't come to me with problems, come to me with solutions, right? Anybody can throw darts, right? Come to me with solutions. And so they do. The plan, they have a plan for Paul. They say the plan is for Paul to take a Nazarite vow. What are they talking about here? I'm not going to go right into it. I was going to give you a whole teaching on that, but we're not going to go there. From Numbers, Numbers 6, 1 to 21. If you're one of those Bible people like me and you want to do it, there it is. Numbers 6, 1, uh, 1 to 21. Basically, they're going through a special purification. They had to abstain from wine. They couldn't even have grapes or grape juice. They had to, uh, they had to avoid anything that would make them unclean. No going to a funeral, right? Uh, and they didn't cut their hair for 30 days. So they're going through this vow, and they also had to make a certain offering at the temple and have their hair cut at the temple after going through this purification process. So Paul was to take part. Now, he couldn't do the Nazarite vow, but what he was going to do is he had to purify himself. It says set that seven days, took set Paul seven days to purify himself. And then he was to go with the men to the temple and pay their fees just to show the other Jewish Christians he's got no problem with following the law as an act of devotion as long as it's not required of the Gentiles or considered something that you need to do to earn favor with God. But as an act of devotion, yes, that's fine. You can do that. And so he, he goes, he pays their expenses, the cost of their offering at the temple, um, and he takes part. And he's mainly here trying to act as a peacemaker. What does Jesus say? 5-9, we're going to talk about this this summer because we're going to go through the Beatitudes over the summer. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Paul's doing everything he can to live in a way where he's at peace with the people around him. And that's what they do. Romans 12, 18 says, If possible, as far as it depends on you, live peaceable with all. Paul's doing everything he can to live, live peaceable. And it gives God a tremendous opportunity to glorify himself. Paul offering himself like this gives God an opportunity. Now, it doesn't work out how Paul had hoped, but it worked out way better than Paul could have ever planned himself. And that's the best that we can expect as Christians. And it almost works, though, in the way that, the, that James and the elders had planned. They almost make it to the end of the seven days, but then some of the religious types from Asia arrived and recognized Paul. These are actually not Jewish Christians. Uh, they're elites from the synagogue, we believe, probably Ephesus. They would have been coming back for, the, for Pentecost, and they would have traveled there. Um, and it's this uneasy situation. So they see Paul, and then I read it to you in verses 28 and 29, they whip everybody up into a frenzy. They misrepresent what Paul's up to. And it's kind of a combustible situation. So, any, so anyways, Paul ends up, despite his best efforts, in the middle of a very violent situation, uh, following the plans of the Christian elders, and he's in the middle. Has anybody, I don't know if any of you have been in the middle of a violent riot. I've seen a food riot before. Uh, we almost lost a chaplain off the back of a truck in a food riot once. Like, this is a serious thing. Like, I'm, Paul, Paul, this is one of those, you know, 50-50 if Paul's even going to make it out of this, especially if they're trying to kill him. Uh, he ends up uh, arrested in chains and under the, the guard, once again, of the Romans, and he's only been in the city just over a week. Definitely did not work out how Paul had hoped. Probably how he expected, because he'd been told the whole way it's going to happen. But it did not Paul, it work out. So what does this all mean? Okay, as Christians, friends, even when our best intentions and plans bring trouble, God is in control. He did it for Paul, and he does it for us as well. And I know a lot of you, are, you're working, 
you know, you're, you're outreaching to people in your lives right now, and you're giving of yourself, and it's just not working out, just remember, no act done in Jesus' name is lost. No act done in Jesus' name is lost. God is in control, and he's working through you. Okay, just keep devoting yourself to God and leave the results up to him. And so that's what Paul does. And at this point, God uses Paul's trials and imprisonment. He, he's going to do amazing, amazing things. We're going to see this. More than Paul could have imagined or planned, he's going to witness to the gospel to this crowd. He's going to go back out and witness the gospel to them. He's going to minister to his guards. He's going to make it to Rome. He's going to write part of the New Testament while he's in chains. Like God is going to do amazing things through Paul even though his plans, of, he's, in the, he's been in the middle of a riot where people are trying to kill him. But God is faithful. From this point on, God uses Paul's trials and imprisonment to accomplish great things, and he can do the same for you. This is not just a nice story. This is the story of every Christian. We have to remember that with the Bible. We don't see the Bible the way the world sees it. This is our story. This is your story and what God wants to do through you. We see it over and over again in Scripture. Staying faithful to God produces a harvest of righteousness. God loves to surprise his people. He loves it in the Bible and glorify himself in ways that only he can. Remember Joseph in the technicolor dream coat? His brothers sold him into slavery. They literally meant for him the worst evil. They're like, let's not kill him. Let's make him a slave. The worst evil that you could have. Send him off to be a slave somewhere else. But through Joseph's faithfulness and God's grace, his entire family, indeed his entire nation, was blessed and God's plans marched forward. Genesis 5.20, Joseph finally says to his brothers when he reveals himself, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. Amen. It's the same in Joseph's life. It's the same in Paul's life. And who else's life is it the same in? It's the same in yours and in mine. Aside, um, I'm not going to go there. And I know, uh, let's go to the next slide. I know some of you are, are dealing with, are going through some tough times. I know it's Mother's Day. I don't want to rain on the parade, but we want to be honest here as well, right? Um, some of you are quietly going through challenges that maybe one or two of us know or maybe none of us know. I know that's happening. The Lord was really putting on my heart that there's a lot of people here, there's a lot of people online who are struggling with things in their lives. Amy and I have been praying for you. I want you to know that. Um, it's whether it's the past things you've witnessed, whether it's stuff that's been done to you, stuff you've done, whether it's medical, it has to do with your family, whether it's Mother's Day, it can be really tough. Amy talked about for those who have lost children, grandchildren, those who have a prodigal child in your family right now. I know a lot of you are going through, you're having trouble in your family right now. The struggle can be real in life. I know it can. We want to be honest about that. When it comes to walking with God to the, through the struggle of life, I'm not only the pastor, friends, I'm a client. We, Amy and I, we walk with it, walk, walk the same Lord in the same path as you guys do. I know it can be tough. Sin is real. Uh, we are the blood-bought citizens of heaven through Jesus. Um, but even as Jesus' blood-bought followers, we live in a fallen world, don't we? And we have to deal with the result of that. But I have a message for you this morning. God is still in control. God is still with you. And staying faithful to God will produce a righteousness in you and through you. And that producing of that righteousness will bear fruit in your own life as well. It is going to help you grow through these, these things that have happened through you, to you, and in your life. God wants to walk with you, just like he walked with Paul. None of us would plan for these things, would we? Really? The trials of life? But we won't go through them alone. We go through them with God. God wants to surprise you with glory this week. He's that good, friends. Jesus is that good. Even the worst stuff. He wants to surprise you with glory. So I want you to receive these promises of God this morning. This is from Paul. He wrote this in Corinthians. This is the guy who was just about beat to death this morning and then arrested, okay? 
And that happened over and over again. And he chose that. This is what he said. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. When you are weak, then you are strong in Jesus. There are a couple of more here, um, and if you want me to share them with you, I'll share them with you after the service. Um, but wow, rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings that you may rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. That was Peter that said that. I read this story, a story this week about a businessman. His name was Ken, and he was a great businessman, loved the people who worked for him and he liked to go visit them. Now, now, Ken had had a lot of medical problems in his own life, very painful medical problems that he had to get surgery for, and he came through, and he visited this one young man who had, uh, who had a very serious surgery, and the man was in a lot of pain, and his recovery was uncertain whether or not he was even gonna recover, uh, and it was gonna be a long road, even if he did, so Ken's like, I gotta go visit this guy, and I gotta go encourage him. And when he went in, he shared two verses with this young man. He said, these are the verses that help me. These two verses help me. He said, every day, these two, these two verses are an attitude that we choose between. Biblical attitudes we can choose, or attitudes from the Bible we can choose between. They are Genesis 4, 36, and Romans 8, 21, or 8, 28. Every day we choose one of these attitudes, especially when life is difficult. We can choose one of these two things. We can choose to say with Jacob, everything is against me. Or we can choose to say with Paul from this morning, all things are working together for my good in making me into the likeness of Jesus. We have a choice this week between those two attitudes. By the power of the Holy Spirit, choose the attitude of Paul, my brothers and sisters. When you face trials and temptations or hardship, especially those for the gospel, are you going to be beat up alone or are you going to be upbeat through Jesus? Because he walked that road. He came through it on the other side, resurrected to an existence that, existence that no one saw coming. Do you think anybody there at that time, even his disciples who he told, didn't see it coming? And he can do the same for Paul. And he does the same for us. And I, you know, I can't wait to see the harvest of righteousness that he does through West Guilford Baptist Church. Amen? All right, I'm going to invite the ushers to go down and get the kids while I, I, uh, I talk about a resource I came across. Um, but I just do, I do really want to encourage you. And if you are struggling with something this morning, and you felt like maybe I was talking to you this morning, or the Spirit was talking to you, we have prayer available at the back of the church for a reason. And if you're lined up, there's a few of us that like to sit around and see if there's anybody we can pray with, right? So we will get you through prayer. Don't walk through it alone. Call Amy. Come into the church. Let us minister to you. Walk with you as the family of God and speak truth into your life. And also be blessed. When you, when you share your trials with us and then God brings you through it, other people are ministered through that witness, friends. You're blessing other people by letting them walk with you. So don't do it alone. Don't do it alone. I just want to pray with you before I go to our big finish. Lord God, you are so great. You are so glorious. You give us a community. But not only community, you give us a promise, Lord God, that when we stay faithful to you, you grow a harvest of righteousness no matter what we go through. And there is a story for every seat that is filled in this room, Lord God, a story that you're working through. We just invite you to have your way, Lord God, in our church and in our lives and grow us more and more into that glory that you have for each and every one of us. In your name we pray. Amen. As you do, uh, you may be aware that I'm a big fan of the Bible. Um, and so I actually have a resource for you. I want to make you aware of a great resource online for studying the Bible. This is uh, ESV.org. ESV.org. It is a free online study Bible and free online study tools that are super easy to use. I used them, some of them, for this, this sermon. And I was going through it going, I can't believe they've They've made it, it used to be really hard to use, so I never talk with anybody about it. They've made it super easy. I'm going to show you how easy it is, all right? So if you were to go to, it, to, uh, to this is what the, the splash page is, we call it, esv.org. If you just click on Read Now, it takes you to the next, and Matthew pops up. 
And what I did is opens up or whatever, in whatever book you want, you just go up to the search bar, I typed in Acts, I hit enter, it took me to Acts, okay? Which is great, because I could read the Bible. But even on top of that, the best part of this, okay, is what's called the Global Study Bible. And I clicked that, and it took me to the next, and on the side here is a free study Bible. Uh, the people at ESV.org, the people at Crossway, actually had scholars come together to make a Bible free for pastors overseas who couldn't afford all kinds of nice leather-bound Bibles for Master's Bookstore like I got for myself up here. Right? They wanted to make these resources free. So it's a really good study Bible. It's, I put it right up there with my ESV study Bible. So it's there as well. And then if you were to go, uh, let's go back again. So we go back. If I was to click back, then it takes me there. Then these right here are actually the Greek New Testament and the Hebrew Old Testament. So let's click on the Greek New Testament. When I click on that, take the next slide. Nope, next one, next one. Okay, when I click on that, it takes me here and a bunch of Greek comes up, all right? But all it is, it's super easy. I'm like, I want to know what the word book means. So I click on the word book. Anywhere on the word book, I click on there. Take us to our next slide. Over here, it comes up with what the Greek means where it's used and how it's used in other parts of the Bible. Like if you think if you're a pastor overseas, this would be very helpful. This, I hope, is helpful to you too. If you come across a passage where you have a question, go to esv.org, look it up in the study Bible, and let's get into God's Word and be shaped by God's Word. But not only just shaped by it, shaped by a deep and a true understanding of what God means in and through it. Amen? I'm going to invite the worship team to come forward uh, as I finish us off in prayer. Loving God, I give you thanks. Uh, for your word this morning, your word to me has been challenging, Lord God, to share struggles that are going on. I pray, Lord God, that you would bring us alongside those who are struggling this morning. Uh, you bring us alongside those mothers, Lord God, who, who are not only celebrating, but there is a little, bit of, a little bit of weeping that's going on in their spirits as well, Lord God. Uh, give us grace to come and ask for prayer when we need it. And most of all, Lord God, draw us closer into the image of your Son. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together.
again, prayer is available at the back. May God bless you this week. I pray for a harvest of righteousness to be upon you. From Romans 11, 33 and 36. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. And the people said, Amen. Have a great week, everybody. God bless.